Okay. Now, last time we have introduced uh, the, the definition of Q conjugate directions. Um, the idea is to find the idea of Q conjugate directions are that the, the directions uh, that are uh, perpendicular in the uh, sense of Q inner product. So we say that X and Y are Q conjugate or uh, perpendicular in the Q inner product sense is that X transpose QY or you can write this as X times the Q times Y. So in this case, the Q is a matrix. Q is a matrix. Uh, X, is a, X and the Y are both vectors. So when you multiply Q and Y together, you get a vector and you have this X as another vector taking the inner product of that. Or uh, as we did before, the X is transpose is a row vector and uh, Q is a square matrix. The Y is a column vector. So when you get multiply them together, get, uh, you get a scalar. So if this scalar is zero, then uh, we say the X and the Y are Q conjugate, or they are perpendicular in the Q, in the sense of Q inner product. Since we have defined before that this can be written as the inner product, the Q inner product of X and Y. Okay, so that's the idea of Q conjugate uh, vectors. Um, so here, we're going to give an example. Uh, let's say we are given the matrix Q here. It's a three by three matrix, given this way, and uh, it's a square matrix. And uh, we uh, first we want to show that this Q is a positive definite matrix. Okay, and secondly, we want to show uh, we want to find out three Q conjugate directions. We call them Q, D zero, D one, and D two. Okay. Uh, there are Q conjugate means that you pick up any two of them, uh, their Q inner product is zero. Okay, so let's first uh, show that the Q is a conjugate uh, is a uh, positive definite matrix. Uh, apparently, it's a symmetric, as you can see here. Uh, how to show that Q is uh, positive definite? Uh, we know that by the definition of Q positive definite matrix. We use this notation. So you can either use the definition, which means that x transpose qx is greater than zero. It's a it's a it's a scalar that is greater than zero for all the non-zero x, non-zero vector x. Okay, so that's the original definition. Um, secondly. If you want to show that Q is positive definite, you can also show um, the eigenvalues of Q are all positive. Okay, so you want to show that all the eigenvalues Okay, so this is the second way to show the matrix Q is positive definite. The third one is what we're trying to show here. If all the leading principal minors of the matrix Q is uh, has a positive determinant, then uh, the Q is positive definite. Okay. Okay, I think this uh, second, first and second are clear. The last one, if you have taken the linear algebra before, uh, which I believe you'd have done so, uh, the principle, the leading principle minor is that if you have a matrix, like a Q here, uh, then you look at the first uh, one by one, left uh, upper left corner, one by one matrix, which is just uh, the first entry. And then you look at the, the two by two, uh, and then three by three. 
all the way to the last one n by n. If you, all these matrices have positive determinant, then、uh, the matrix Q is positive definite. Okay, so here we can use either one of them.、Um, Let's say, for example, here we use the、uh, we check the、uh, leading principal minors. Let's see, because we have just three of them to check, which is、uh, should be easy to do for a three by three matrix here. So let's say、um, the first leading、uh, principal minor is this three, which is positive, so it's fine. And then we check this leading、uh, principal minor, which is. Uh, the two by two matrix three zero zero four, and apparently the determinant is twelve, and that is positive. And then we check this whole matrix, and、uh, check the determinant of this matrix. In the it is the twenty two, which is also positive. So because of this, we check this third one, and that means this Q matrix is positive definite. Okay. So when we start the Q conjugate matrix directions,、uh, make sure that first check this matrix. Q is positive definite. Okay, so now、uh, let's find three、uh, Q country directions. The first one we can、uh, we are actually free feel free to we have liberty to choose any、uh, direction a non-zero direction、uh, as the D zero, and then starting from D one we need to have constraint. We will have constraint because D one has to be Q conjugate with、uh, with the D zero or D not. Okay,、uh, so here let's say. We are since we can choose any、uh, non-zero vector as d zero. Let's say we choose the simplest one, the the one zero zero. Okay, so we've set the d zero to be just simply one zero zero. So it's a three-dimensional vector、uh, with one here. Okay, that's our d zero, and then we need to get d one, d two. Remember that、uh, we can construct this d one. And、uh, make sure that this D1 is Q conjugate with D0. So we need to make sure that the D1 transpose times Q times D0 is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what the D1 should satisfy. And then once we got the D1, a D1, we should get the D2, and D2 needs to be、uh, Q conjugate with D D0 and D1. Okay, so that means we need To find D two such that D two transpose Q D zero is zero, and also D two transpose Q D three, ah D D one is zero. So we need to make sure that that uh the D two satisfies the last two equations. Okay, and the D one D zero is chosen as one zero zero, so that makes the first one pretty easy. So remember that.、Um, let's see from the second page, the next page, the D one. Let's say that three components of D one are these three. Okay, so the superscript one means the index here, and the subscript means the、uh, component. So there, are, there are three components of D one. So we need to figure out what D one should be, and the con the constraint is that the D one. Uh, it needs to be Q conjugated with D zero, so we just need to, as we showed earlier, we just need to make sure that this is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's see the D one, as we showed before, is D. As we said, the D one has these three components. Okay, so this is my D one, and the Q is the previous matrix, and we showed that is three. Zero. Ah,、uh, see. One, zero, four, two, one, two, three. Okay, and the D zero or D not, ah,、uh, was chosen as one zero zero. Okay, so we need to choose the the vector, D one here, such that this whole thing equals to. Zero. Okay, so now say we know that、uh, we can multiply the matrix and the, the D zero vector first, and we will get D one, D one one, 
D one two, D one three, and uh, when I multiply the matrix and the vector, I know that it's just giving me the first column of the matrix, which is this. And then I multiply these two vectors, I'll get three D one one and uh, D one three. Okay, I need to make sure this is equal to zero. And that is how I get this one. Okay, so we have two variables uh, to make this to uh, make this equal to zero. So as you can see, we have the liberty to choose to choose one of them and uh, uh, just set the other one to satisfy this equality. So for example, we can set D1 to one and D3 to zero or uh, to, to negative three, and then they will satisfy this, right? So we just say this is one. This is negative three. Okay, so we can choose that. And uh, D2, where it could be anything, so we just set it to zero for the simplicity. And now we have the D1 vector, which is one, zero, negative three. Okay, so you can, as we said earlier, uh, you can choose other ones as well. Uh, but if you choose a different uh, D1 here, it will affect your choice of D2 later. Okay. But you can, as we said, as long as you choose the D1, D2, uh, the three components of D1 uh, to satisfy this, then it should be fine. It will be fine. Okay? Just, just uh, be notified that uh, it will affect your choice later. Okay, so now let's say we chose this D1 in this way and then see what the, the D2 should be. As we said earlier, the D2, uh, let's say the D2 has these three components. Again, this two means the index for the D, and this one, two, three means the components. Gives us the component uh, index for the component. Now we want D two to be Q conjugated with D zero. At the same time, uh, the D two needs to be Q conjugated with D one. Okay, and I already have D zero and D one earlier. So D zero is just one zero zero, and D one here is what we just got here. And now we know the Q already, so we're going to repeat the same same procedure like this one. But now we have not just this one single equation; we'll have two of them. Okay, so we repeat this procedure. Now we have d two, as we said, is d two one, d two two, d two three, and then we need to multiply the matrix, which is three zero one. 0, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3. And then uh, the vector d naught is just 1, 0, 0. And this needs to be equal to 0. At the same time, the d1, d2, 1, d2, 2, d2, 3, multiply the 3, 0, 1, 0, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3. And the, the d1 here is what we just chose, which is computed. So D1, and we need to make sure this is equal to zero as well. So you can just uh, do this computation, and you have two equations with uh, three unknowns D1, D2, D3, and uh, that two equations are given by this. Okay, and uh, as you can see, we, um, we still have some freedom to choose um, one of the variables. Uh, so we can just uh, choose two of them, Freely uh, choose one of them freely and uh, determine the other two accordingly. Okay. So again, let's say we chose uh, we choose this d one to be one, and then the d uh, the third component needs to be negative three. Okay. And uh, it is negative three, so I need to plug in negative three here, and then we solve for the uh, d two the second component. So as you can see, I have uh, negative six d two uh, plus 24, and that solving for D2, I'll get 4. So that's the 4 here. And now I get the D2 vector, which is 1, 4, negative 3. Okay, so uh, in summary, we have have the D, D0, D1, and D2. And the, due to the way we construct them, uh, the, D, the D1 is Q conjugate with D0, and D2 is Q conjugated with D1 and then D2. So that's how 
uh, this is why the three are Q conjugate. Okay, pick up any two, they're Q conjugate. Okay, so this is the uh, example how we construct Q conjugate vectors or Q conjugate directions. Okay. So this construction is really uh, gives us lots of freedom. Uh, in some cases, we want to get those vectors as uh, somehow normalized uh, in the normalized sense. So as we said earlier, the Q inner product in induces this Q norm. We said that the Q, if you have a Q uh, positive definite matrix Q, then the X transpose Q. As we said, this is the Q inner product of the vector itself, and they can be considered as the Q norm of square the Q norm of X. Okay? And uh, in this sense, we can always normalize a vector by its Q norm. So that means by normalizing a vector, we mean that we can replace X by, uh, by dividing its Q norm. Okay? And by doing this, we can show that um, the Q norm of this vector will be equal to 1. The reason is, if I replace x by this, and I take the Q norm, I will see that because this is just a constant, so it's just constant, I can move it out freely, and I will just have the, the Q norm of the, uh, the numerator x, and then the two, two norms will be canceled. So this will give me the x q norm divided by x q norm, and that is equal to 1. So it is normalized in the q norm sense. Okay, um, And as we said earlier, uh, we can just construct the, the uh, directions, the q conjugate directions, as we did earlier. And then we normalize, for each one we got, we normalize it. Okay, And this is uh, the same, this is exactly the same idea as Gram-Schmidt. A process that can be used to, to construct orth, uh, orthogonal or orthonormal uh, vectors. Remember that the Q, uh, the gram schmidt process, we can start with some vector, say uh, the D0. Okay, say we can, all right, we have, uh, say, n linear independent vectors, we call them B0 v1 all the way to v say n minus 1 so i have these n vectors and if i want to construct so they are linearly independent but they could be they may not be orthogonal to each other and their length uh, may not be one so what i mean is that imagine that in a 2d case you probably have like these two vectors well uh, this is v0 and this is v1 And you want to convert this into this, which have uh, which is the d0 and d1, and the d0 d1 both are both the unit vectors, and they're they're orthogonal to each other, right? So by Gram-Schmidt proceed process, we know that to do this, you can first get the d0, <coughs> and then uh, normalize the v1 v0. Right? And then for D1, you first uh, subtract the, uh, you first uh, take the inner product of the V1 and D0. Basically, you're taking the, you're projecting the V1 to the space of D0, spanned by D0. And then uh, you take that part out of V1, and the whatever left is called the D1. So the V1, minus the v1 d naught times d naught. So as I said, this this line here is just to take out the part that is uh, on a d0 direction. So if we go back to this, uh, this picture here on the right, we will first get the d0, which is just normalizing the v0. So we will get we will just normalize this 
to make this lens to uh, make this lens equal to one. So, for example, here suppose the lens is bigger than one, say it's two, then we need to normalize normalize it like this. Okay, so I will normalize the d v zero. I will get say I'll get this. This is my d zero. The v one is still like before. Okay, so what I did is just just uh, shrink the length of the v0 and make it a, make it a unit vector and then from here i will project the v1 to d0 so i'm going to make this projection and this part this vector here uh, has a length equal to that right that's the inner product between v1 and d0 and d0 unit vector so this is just the length uh, when we project v1 to d0 and this d0 here gives me the direction of this projection which is this direction uh, that is the same as d0 so the thing here the whole the whole thing here is this vector gives me the direction of d0 and the lens is the projection so it's the right angle here and then i take out the uh, take out this from the v1 so the v1 is this. If I take out this vector, that means I only have this vector left. Okay, so that's the vector left. And that is what I will get for now. So I will just move it to the origin. And uh, this is my d1. This vector is my d1. And then I need to normalize the d1. So to normalize it, I will replace d1 by uh, d1 divided by its norm. Okay, and then I normalize the D1. Then I finish the D1. I can move on to V2 and uh, uh, do the same, do the same, same uh, do the same similar to this process, and get uh, the D2 and so on and so forth. Okay, and for D2, I need to make a projection to both D1 and D2. Okay, here we already have D0, so we only have D0 so far, so we only project to the D0. But if since we have, I uh, will work on the D2. Then we have both D0 and D1, and you need to make a projection to both of them. So to the general process, as you know, is to uh, first get the D, K, and uh, that will be equal to VK. That's the, the next vector we're going to work with. Subtract uh, I'm going to make a projection of VK to all the previous D, uh, Ds. So that is VK, all the previous DJs, where J is from 1 to 0 to K uh, minus 1, and then DJ. Okay? So suppose we already have the D1, D2, uh, D0, D1 up to DK minus 1. And then we'll get dk by first doing this, and then divide dk by its norm to normalize it. And now everything is the same, except that the inner product is going to be replaced by the q inner product. And uh, here, by normalization, we need to uh, divide by the q uh, norm. So um, that's how we get this. Uh, Q conjugate directions, and as yes, you can uh, normalize the Q conjugate directions, and I see this is exactly what we sh uh, showed here on this slide. Um, suppose you have this unlinearly independent vectors, and then you start with the d0, which is just normalizing the v0 using its Q norm, and then once you get the, the first uh, k vectors, d0 through dk minus 1, then you can compute dk by doing the same thing here. And now the only difference, uh, if you compare this one, uh, if you compare this one and this one, the only difference seems to be here, but this actually is, is exactly this one here, right? Since the way we define the Q norm, you just um, multiply these two with the Q in, the bet in between. So that's this. Okay, and then after you do this, you just uh, normalize it as we show here. And once we once you do the, uh, do this, then you can uh, get a uh, you get you can get these n vectors, new vectors d zero to d n minus one from these linear independent vectors, 
such that there the d vectors are q conjugate to each other, and each one has a, a unit q norm. Okay, every d vector has a unit q norm. Okay, so um, now let's uh, consider a, the more practical issue when uh, we were trying to apply the conjugated directions to uh, instead of the distant instead of the negative gradient as our uh, descent direction, and then this will, this will be called the conjugate direction method. Okay, so that is in contrast in contrast to the gradient based method where we in each step we get x k plus one by applying by computing this uh, by doing this right this is a gradient method where gk is the gradient of f at xk and alpha k is the step size and we said this is can be problematic if uh, the f uh, is eu conditioned and uh, this uh, this gradient direction, this gradient descent method will take lots of zigzag to reach to the minimum, and that is very inefficient. And here, instead of using the negative gradient as the descent direction, we try to use the conjugate directions, and let's see if that is going to improve. So again, first we consider consider quadratic functions. Uh, as we said, this is a very special type of functions. Uh, that's probably the easiest function that we can minimize. But this has lots of applications, and that we can get some idea from uh, studying the uh, quadratic functions. So now the quadratic function is given by this, as we did before. Q is a positive definite matrix, B is some given vector. Okay, so suppose we have the uh, Q conjugate directions uh, d0, so d minus 1. Okay, assume we have this. Um, then let's say we are going to do, we are going to replace the gradient descent method with this conjugate direction method or conjugate direction algorithm. So what the algorithm is doing is, so for example, suppose we already have the xk at hand. Okay, so we already get xk. Then what we're going to do in this iteration is we compute the gradient of f at xk. Basically, we're computing this. We need to compute this gk, and then we know for a quadratic function, the gradient it is just uh, qx minus b. So here the gk is nothing but the qxk minus b, and then we're going to decide the step size alpha k, and then we're going to set our alpha k to be this. Okay, we set our alpha k to be this. Okay, once we have the alpha k as the step size. And as we said earlier, we're going to use the conjugate direction dk in the case step. So in the first iteration, we're going to use d0. Second iteration, we're going to use d1. Okay. In the case iteration, we're going to use dk. And the step size is what we just computed above. And then with the xk, we can update to the xk plus 1. And then this is finished one iteration. Now we're going to repeat this for the next iteration. Okay. And this alpha k, as we will show either easily, this alpha k is nothing but the steepest descent step size, because uh, as we said, we're going to choose. If we determine, uh, we decided to go for the dk direction, and then let's say what is the optimal step size for a quadratic function here. And as we said before, to do to find this optimal step size, we just need to form the line search function. Um, you decided that you start from you move from x k, and then you decide to go with the dk direction. Then alpha k is the only thing that is uh, still that is to be determined. And to determine alpha k or to determine alpha, we just do need to minimize this function with respect to alpha. Okay, but alpha is just a scalar. So we plug in this into uh, into this x, and then we take the data with respect back to alpha. Set to zero, and that is give that will give us this, okay. And that is also meet the minimizer of this line search function, which is a function of a scalar alpha, okay. As we said, take a delta with respect to alpha, set to zero, and then solve for this alpha, you get this, okay. It's a closed form formula for the step size alpha. Okay. So this is called the conjugate direction algorithm.
Okay, so a property of this country direction algorithm or basic country direction uh, algorithm is that if we, if you really can do this, uh, if you really ha are given this uh, conjugated directions of Q, and you apply these steps, in, these three steps in each iteration, then it is guaranteed that you can get to the minimum of this uh, problem within n steps, where n is the dimension of x. Okay, we'll get to the uh, minimizer within n steps where n is the dimension of this x, which is also the dimension of the q, right? The x is n dimensional vector, q is the n by n matrix. Okay, so now let's say why this is true. Uh, the theorem, this is the theorem uh, that we're going to prove. Uh, it says that the converged with the n steps. Okay, so recall that when we uh, do this con basic conjugate algorithm, we see that for each step, the xk plus 1 is related to xk by this term. Okay, and if this is the case, you can imagine that xk itself is written by xk minus 1 plus alpha k minus 1 dk minus 1. Right? That's for the xk. And then plus alpha k dk. Okay? And now we can further expand this xk minus 1. We know that it's related to 2 xk minus 2, so on and so forth. So every time we reduce this uh, iteration number k, k you will get one more dk coming out. So by doing this, you know, eventually you will just have x0. Let me just write it out. By doing this, you know, eventually you'll get x0 plus alpha 0 d0 plus alpha 1 uh, d1 all the way to alpha k dk. So that is actually, uh, that's what dk plus xk plus 1 actually is. Okay, and in general, up to the, when I reach the, the last step, that will be the nth iteration, we'll get xn. So xn will be, as we said, it will be raised to xn minus 1 in this way. And then we expand xn minus 1, and we'll get one more dn minus 2. And uh, just keeping do, keep doing this, we'll get this in the end, right? So the xn is nothing but x0 plus some linear combinations uh, of the conjugate directions. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is to show that uh, if the alpha 0, alpha 1 through alpha n minus 1 was chosen in the formula here, then xn is guaranteed to be the minimizer, okay? The xn is guaranteed to be the minimizer. Okay, so uh, to prove this, we just need to show that uh, the xn minus x0 is equal to x star minus x0. Okay, if they are equal, then xn must be equal to x star. Okay, so to do to that end, let's say that x0, uh, sorry, x star, which is the minimizer of the uh, of the quadratic function, minus x naught, is equal to this, a linear combination of dns. As we said before, those uh, conjugate, direct, conjugate directions are linearly independent. And now we have d0 to d minus 1. So there are unlinearly independent vectors here. So any vector, any n-dimensional vector can be re represented by a linear combination of these linearly independent vectors. Okay, You can think of this d0 through d minus 1 as a basis. Or linear independent basis of Rn. So since this is the vector in Rn, it is supposed to be able to, we're supposed to uh, write it um, as some linear combination of those uh, bases. Okay, and the only thing that is undetermined is that we don't know what is, uh, what are these vectors, oh, B, uh, B case. Okay, so now we know, we know exactly what is Xn, x0 and uh, these vectors are, uh, also these uh, coefficients are. And now suppose x star minus x0 is equal to this, then would the, to show that xn is equal to x star, we just need to show that alpha 0 is equal to beta 0, alpha 1 is equal to beta 1, 
all the way to alpha n minus 1 is equal to beta n minus 1. If we can show that, then as we said, this, this, uh, this equation is equal to the sum of alpha k dk k is from 0 to n minus 1 and the, on the bottom we have x star minus x0 is equal to beta k dk so if we can show all the parameters all the kind of coefficients here are are equal correspondingly then we know that this is equal to this and that shows that x n is equal to x star okay so that's the only thing that we need to show just to check that the beta k is equal to alpha k okay uh, how do we show that let's multiply the uh, x star minus x zero by the dk transpose q so that means we given this as a vector we're going to multiply dk transpose q on the left okay so that's how we get just multiply dk transpose q to x star minus x zero okay and now remember that this x star minus x zero as we said is this okay and uh, it's d0 to dn minus 1, a linear combination of d0 to, to dn minus 1. So this thing here is nothing but just this. Okay, and remember that this d, uh, this d vectors are q conjugate. So if we make the inner product of this, if we multiply dkq and the, a linear combination of the di's, the dk will be uh, Q conjugate uh, with anything here except except the DK itself. So only have when we multiply this together, we only have the the beta K DK left because the DK Q DJ for any J not equal, not equal to Q uh, not equal to K will give us zero. Okay, so we only have one term left, and that is single term is beta K DK. So that's the only thing that we have left, which is this. Okay, and now um, remember that our goal is to show that beta k is equal to alpha k, and alpha k is that. Alpha k is this. Okay, and now beta k satisfies this. So when we, when we divide this both sides by this uh, part, we see that the beta k is just uh, this as the numerator, and this as the denominator, and then compared to alpha k. It has this as the numerator, where the negative signs there. The denominator is the same. So we just need to show the numerator uh, negative gk dk is the same as this quantity here. Okay, so let's see how to show that. So as we said, we divide the d transpose dk tra transpose q dk on both sides. We divide this. On both sides, we'll just move this to the bottom on the left. So we get this. So let's check the numerator. The numerator has this dk, has this one here. And now for this term, um, let's compare where the alpha k is. The alpha k is as simple as negative gk dk. And now uh, this nothing looks like this, right? So let me write this alpha k here. Alpha k is negative gk transpose dk divided by dk transpose q dk. Okay, so to make sh to show that alpha k equals to beta k, let's make some changes to this numerator of beta k. Okay, so I'm going to keep this unchanged. Uh, and here I'm going to subtract xk and add xk back okay so subtract xk and add xk back and now um, remember that this q x star because the f x equals to half x transpose q x minus b transpose x so we know the gradient f at x is equal to q x 
minus b. So if this is equal to zero, I know that uh, if x star is the minimizer, then this equation f must be zero there because of the first order necessary condition. And that gives us q x star minus b equals to zero. And this means that q x star equals to b. OK, so that's the q x star we have here. And that is just equal to b. Okay, so when I change this to b, and then we have uh, negative q x k plus b, and that is just uh, g k. Right, so that's why q x star minus x k becomes b minus q x k, and that's according to the definition of gradient. That's just negative gradient f at xk, and that's just a negative gk. Okay, so that's this part becomes negative gk dk, and that is what we need here. But we have extra term. We also need to modify this to this term. Okay, uh, what is that? Uh, that has to be zero. Right? It has to be zero. Now why it is zero? Well, Recall that we said that xk is written as the one thing that we showed earlier. The xk here, oh, okay, I have xk plus 1. And what is x0 sum all the way to alpha k dk? But if I have xk here, I just have xk here, then I'll have the sum of x0 all the way to the alpha k minus 1 dk minus 1, right? We don't have this term. Only to the uh, the last term is alpha k minus one dk minus one. Okay, and that is what happens here. This thing is nothing but some linear combinations or some linear combination of alpha zero through alpha k minus one. Okay, so what I have left on the numerator is this. This will be sum of alpha uh, i di, or alpha j, dj, where j is from 0 to k minus 1. Well, this can be written as, because uh, the product is uh, linear in this last term, so I have the sum of j from 0 to k minus 1, dk transpose q dj, Well, I have uh, the alpha k, so I need to have this alpha k. Alpha j. Okay, alpha j is a scalar. Uh, scalar, row vector here, square uh, square matrix and column vector. Okay, so we'll get a scalar for each term. But remember that the dk is the j is less than k. J is from zero to k minus one. So that's why the dk. Remember that all the dk's are q conjugate. That means dk is q conjugated with every one of this. That means this term will be just zero, it's zero. And that means if each term is zero, then the sum will be zero. So we'll get, just get zero. And that's why uh, when we see, multiply this to this term, it is just a zero, it's just a gone. Okay, and that's why we have what we wanted. This is just a alpha k. So that shows the big k is equal to alpha k. Okay, and because of that, we, as we said earlier, this means that x n is equal to x star. So if you haven't reached to the x star yet, then you have uh, before the n iteration, then you must be able to reach that at the n c iteration. Okay, so the <clears throat> basic conjugated gradient algorithm converges within n steps. Okay, um, so before, and then we next, uh, next we uh, are going to uh, prove the, or to actually develop the uh, country gradient method, because the heat before this, uh, what we showed is this country, the basic country gradient method has a big assumption. The assumption is that we know this uh, country directions. Right? But in practice, we're just given this problem. How do we know that country directions? 
Constructing the country directions can be done as we did earlier, but this is, that seems to be expensive. We did for three by three matrix, that's not so bad. But if this n is super large, let's say the n is in the thousands of several thousands, and for each d we uh, construct, we need to make sure it is q conjugate with uh, all the previous d's you constructed. So that can be really expensive. Okay, so in practice, these are not that easy to get, and we don't really have those, and then we do we cannot really apply this algorithm. Okay, so this only seems sounds very theoretically nice. Uh, it converts in steps really nice, but uh, in practice, that's we know we may not have those decays. So we have to have to construct a more realistic or practical algorithm. Uh, that's uh, that's called the country gradient method. And before doing that. We first uh, introduce the this lemma. Uh, it tells us the relation between the Q conjugate directions, decays, and uh, the gradient of uh, the gradient we constructed. Right? You remember in each step we construct the gradient, and uh, we also have the D, uh, Q conjugate directions. That the relation between them is described by this lemma. What it says is the gk plus 1, or the gradient of f at xk plus 1, is perpendicular, directly perpendicular to d0 through dk. Okay, so so what this means is, uh, remember that suppose we have this uh, q conjugate vectors at hand already, just the same assumption as before. Okay. And remember that we're going to use d0 as the first search direction for x0. And when we have the x0, which is the initial guess, we also can compute at g0. And once we got the x1, we can compute the g1. And all the way to gk. And the next one is going to be at gk plus 1. Okay. So what this theorem is, or this lemma says is that uh, this gk is perpendicular to all these uh, decays. Okay, so it's perpendicular to all of them. Okay, you look at any k that is that is that is so. Okay, and also the gk is perpendicular to dk minus one, dk minus two, all the way to d zero. So the gk is perpendicular to those. Okay, so let's see how to uh, how to verify this property. Okay, so remember that we, uh, in the basic conjugate gradient algorithm, the xk plus 1 is obtained by updating the xk using this way. Okay, if we multiply the q on both sides, I simply just have the q here, q here, and also the q here, it's in the upper k, just a scalar. And now for each, and I get this. And now for each side, I, I subtract the b. When I subtract b, uh, remember that qx minus b is the gradient of f at x. So the left hand side is nothing but the gradient of f at xk plus 1. And that is written as gk plus 1, in short. That's, that's this. On the right hand side, I'll have the gk, since that's this part. And then we also have this part left, which is this. Okay, And then this tells us the relation between gk and uh, dk. So the gk plus 1 is updated by uh, from gk by adding this term. Okay, and now um, to show this is true, let's show this, uh, let's use the uh, proof by introduction. Uh, the first one is that we need to show that the g1 is perpendicular to d0. So this j is anything less than or equal to k. So when k is 0, then the j has to be, this will have the g1, have the g1, and then we just need to verify that the g1 is perpendicular to d0. Okay, that's the starting point of the uh, the country with the method. Okay, so that's this. And that is very easy to show. Um, you can check it by yourself. That is, uh, uh, that's pretty easy to show. Uh, it's just just all because of the the construction of the 
or the definition of the alpha k. Okay, check the step size and verify this. Okay, okay. Uh, so I will show the general case when uh, suppose we know this claim. Suppose this claim holds for k. So that means that g k is perpendicular to the d k minus one all the way to d zero. And now we need to show that using this fact or using this as a hypothesis, we're going to show that d k plus one is going to be perpendicular to all those uh, d zero to d k. Okay, so. This is our hypothesis. The dk is perpendicular to the di for all the i's less than or equal to k minus 1. And now we have the gk plus 1. We need to multiply this to di and see if it is equal to 0. OK, so there are two cases. Either I multiply the gk plus 1 to di where i is actually smaller than, smaller than k. OK, that means i is either right here let's say that the gk plus 1 transpose di and as we said earlier this uh, gk plus 1 is written as gk plus alpha k q dk transpose di okay and then we can split the the product we'll have the gk transpose di plus alpha k uh, dk transpose q di okay and the i is uh, from 0 to k minus 1 so this i can be as large as k minus 1 but using the induction hypothesis, the dk is perpendicular to it. So that means this term is always gone. Okay, it should be 0. And then we have this term. And i is less than or equal to k minus 1. So that means this i is different from this k. And we know that these are q conjugate. So that means this term is 0 as well. Okay, so this is uh, the whole thing is just, uh, just giving us two zeros. Okay, that's for the case i is less than or equal to k minus 1. And uh, we said that we need to check this gk plus 1 is perpendicular to is perpendicular to dk and all the previous ones. Now we have shown that gk plus 1 is perpendicular to dk minus 1 and all the earlier ones. Now we just need to check that these two are uh, per perpendicular. So that's for the case where i is equal to k. Okay, and in this case, di is just a dk. Okay, and then we're going to use the same the same uh, uh, idea. We write out this r for k plus one. That is this, and then dk. Now we cannot really cancel things because we don't know GK if GK is perpendicular to DK. Uh, but we can still write the, this out. Break the square, uh, break the parentheses. We can do this the GK DK plus alpha K DK transpose Q DK. Okay. And the question is, if this is equal to zero, okay. Uh, apparently, it is. The reason is we chose our alpha k to make this equal to zero. The alpha k was chosen as this. That is exactly the number that makes this quantity equal to zero. This is just a negative of this divided by that. So when I do this, choose this alpha k, this will be zero. Okay, that is how we show the show that when the induction hypothesis is true, we can show that dk plus one is perpendicular to all the gk plus one is perpendicular to dk and earlier dk's. 
Okay. So the method here actually can be interpreted as a um, expanding subspace method. So what do we mean by that is the um, we remember that the, the we got this Q conjugate directions. Let's say that the dk is a linear span of the first k uh, directions. Okay. Uh, so what the you know what the span means. So you have a span of a bunch of vectors. Just means that all the possible linear combinations of these vectors is called the span or linear span. So it spans a subspace. You spend subspace of Rn, okay? Okay, um, so that's what our dk means. And what we're trying, to, what we're doing for the conjugated, uh, basic conjugated gradient method is we find this or we determine this xk as a minimizer of the f, not over the Rn, but over this subspace dk. Okay. In other words, or xk is actually find as the minimizer of f over this. So what this one x0 plus this dk is, uh, probably know that if I write this in the standard way, you know, by writing this, I mean it's all the x plus y's for y belonging to d. Okay, so. It's pretty much like that, say you have uh, this as your two-dimensional space, your vector y uh, is like this. Say it's like this. Uh, let's say first, uh, this is your x. This is your x. And your y is, uh, say, uh, this. This is your y. So the... Oh, sorry, the D, D is this. This is a subspace D. So X plus D is just shifting this X by D, just shifting that to here. Okay, so this one is X plus D, the space of X plus D. Okay, so that was this one means. So it's just uh, shifting the uh, linear span DK by X0. Or this XK, uh, the way we define this conjugated gradient method is actually the dxk is the minimizer of fk fx over this subspace. Okay, you can say this or you can say this x0 plus this subspace or shift over the subspace. Basically, pick a minimizer of fk over something like this. Okay, why I'm saying that is because uh, the xk, as we showed earlier, is just a uh, so show the xk is equal to x0 plus alpha 0 d0 all the way to alpha k minus 1 dk minus 1. So apparently the x0, xk is just x0 plus some vector in the dk. Right? Because this is a, a vector in the span of the d0 to so dk minus 1. That is the dk space okay and the only thing that we can we need to uh, justify this is that the alphas are chosen such that such kind of choice will minimize the fk okay or the fk the alpha k is chosen such that uh, it is the best choice of alpha that minimize this fk okay so i'm going to write this in uh, in a more concise way so the xk is x0 plus, uh, I can combine the d's. Let's say I write this dk, uh, just a abuse of notation. I, I write this dk as the, um, a, vector, a, a matrix of size n by k. I'm just listing d0 as the first column, d1 as the second column, all the way to dk minus 1 as the last column. Okay, so that's actually my dk, and uh, this whole vector is nothing but the dk times alpha k, where this alpha k is just the vector, this is the vector, alpha 
zero alpha one through alpha k minus one. So this is a k dimensional vector. This is a n by k matrix. Okay, so <coughs> that's exactly what this term is. Okay, so I'm going to show you that the the choice of alpha k we made for in the country basic country gradient algorithm is alpha k that minimizes this minimizes f k f x. So let's say I'm trying to minimize f of x in this uh, x belonging to x zero plus d k. Right. That's to the that's what the this one is trying to work, trying to say. So right now, uh, remember that our goal is to show that if we choose x k uh, in the way of the basic conjugate gradient method, like this, then we see that the the x k, uh, the alpha k is set to this. Okay, I'm going to show that. Uh, if this is the, the way you construct xk, then this alpha k actually can uh, can be used or can be shown to to minimize this to minimize this for the alpha you choose. Okay, so what I'm going to show is this is going to be the minimizer of alpha, which is in rk, and your f is just uh, you decide to choose the xk to as is x0 plus dk alpha. Okay, if I can show that alpha is a minimizer of this, then the choice of alpha will make my xk to be the minimizer, or make my xk the minimizer of this. Okay, okay. So again, here this uh, this minimization problem uh, due to the fact that f x is just a one half x transpose q x minus b x. So the gradient f, as we said, is this is just equal to q x minus b. Okay, now this is a, a function of alpha where it's a composition of f and this linear function of alpha. So if I want to take the, I want to show that the alpha from the minimizer of this, uh, minimizer alpha of this, which then you take the gradient. With respect to alpha and set to zero, so the gradient of this with respect to alpha, since this is a composition of two functions, so the gradient will be uh, we need to apply the chain rule. That will be the gradient f at this point. And then times the uh, the gradient of alpha of the inside with respect to alpha, which is just the decay matrix. So actually, this is just equal to the decay matrix. Okay, so taking the gradient of this with respect to alpha gives me this. And now I'm going to just expand this. Gradient f of something is just the q times that thing plus minus b. So just nothing but the q x0 plus d k alpha minus b. So this is going to take transpose of the d k. And I need to set this to 0 and solve for alpha. So I set this to 0 and solve for alpha. What I will get is I just simplify the, uh, or just skip the step. You can do this by yourself. Just uh, equal to the d k transpose q d k alpha equals to negative dk transpose qx0 minus b. Okay, that's what I actually get. And now, um, um, this left-hand side, remember that this is just a, a matrix and this is a vector. So this, what this matrix is, the D is n by k. This is n by k. So if k is, let's say, a pretty small number, then uh, you should get something like this, this shape of matrix. 
uh, this Q is n by n matrix, which is large, and the DK transpose is something like this. So these three together is just a K by K matrix when I multiply those three. Alpha here is a K by one vector, which is a short vector. Well, it depends on what K is. If K is small, it's a short vector, but it can be as large as N. Okay, and on the right hand side, I should have a, a K dimensional vector as well. Okay, the key is that on the left hand side, uh, when I multiply the DK, Q, DK, what I have is the DK. The DK transpose Q DK. This is, uh, as we said, is this kind of thing, right? And what it actually is, uh, the DK, as we said, is just uh, listing those D, D vectors as columns. That's this one, okay? And the transpose is just transposing them. So I get D zero transpose in the first row, all the way to DK minus one transpose as the last row. That's this first uh, matrix here, lying down. And then I have the Q, and then I have the the vertical version of this Q, this D matrix, which is D, D1, or D0, through DK minus one. Every one of them is a column vector. Okay, and when I multiply this, you actually can show that this is a K by K matrix and this k by k matrix for the uh, ij's entry is nothing but a di transpose q dj. And this is k by k matrix. Okay, the ij's entry is that. It is a scalar di transpose q dj. But remember that those d vectors are q conjugate. So that means if i is different from j, this would be zero. And that also means that this uh, matrix, all the off diagonals are, off diagonal entries are zero. Only the diagonal entries are non zero, which is, which are the dj, q, dj. Okay, so this matrix here, this matrix here multiplied to alpha is just a diagonal matrix. And diagonal entries are d0 transpose d0, d1 transpose q, d1, so on and so forth. Okay, and they are actually. these things. Remember that this is the, the case component of the alpha, of the vector alpha. And this is the denominator. So this totally is came from it came from that this is this is just giving me D0 transpose let me write it on top. I'm rewriting this one here. That's uh, on the top. It's actually d zero transpose q d zero and uh, d one transpose q d one all the way to d k minus one transpose q d k minus one. That is my matrix multiplied to alpha k of <coughs> multiple alpha and alpha is just the alpha zero all to all the way to alpha k minus one. That is my left hand side. So if you want to going to solve for uh, alpha zero to alpha k minus one, is you know it's easy just to divide, uh, just take the inverse of this diagonal matrix and that, but it's just trivial, right? It's like you take the the um, divide each component of the vector on the right hand side by the corresponding values here. Okay, now let's see the right hand side. The right hand side is um, is this thing. Okay, and this is pretty similar to uh, something we did before. You see here, we said that this is B. <coughs> this is just a vector B. And this is just a negative GK already. When we stop, we just have this. Uh, if I have a zero here, I have a zero here, it will be just Q, B minus Q, X zero. 
right? That means this whole thing is nothing but the b minus q x zero. Okay, and that is decay times that. Well, that's the same thing here. This can be written as uh, I'll put the d inside. I'll just put negative inside. It's so just a uh, b minus q x zero. But this <coughs> is just uh, we said this is b is just a q x star. Okay, so this here is nothing but just the d k transpose q x star minus x zero. That's the vector on the right hand side. But we have shown that these are nothing but the numerators, but numerators of beta k. And the, that's just the alpha k. Right? That's what we said. That's just the numerator here. Okay, and that's how we show that this alpha k is just uh, this vector divided by this matrix or the, taking the inverse of this matrix. Now, multiply the inverse of this matrix on both sides, I will get just to have the inverse of this diagonal matrix uh, multiplied by this vector. And as I said, whatever the vector you, you get on the right side, you just divide the corresponding component by this corresponding value here. And that's how we get the alpha k. Okay. Um, so what I have said so far is to verify that alpha is actually minimizing this function. When we restrict, we're getting the x, this, uh, the, the x k is actually just the minimizing our function f, uh, restrict our f to this space, to this shifted linear span of these decay vectors, and the final minimizing miser over there, and the over, minimizer over there is just uh, to determine the, the alphas, and that uh, we show that this alpha is actually the choice uh, we made for the country gradient method, or basically the country gradient algorithm. Okay, and if you if we interpret it in this way, then you can see that uh, since this x k is getting larger and larger, right? Uh, when k gets larger and larger, we have we are including more and more vectors, and these vectors are all linearly independent. Uh, the extreme case that is that when k equals to n, this just uh, include all the country the Mass, uh, conjugate uh, directions, and we know that all those conjugate directions are linearly independent. So if we get n of them, they will span. They will be a basis of R n. So in that case, we're actually searching for this will be n here for x n. This is the n. This will be n here. So we're actually seeking a solution in the entire R n. So we're finding x n as the minimizer of f over the entire Rn. Now that's original, um, uh, under the minimization problem. We're not restricting our s search within a certain uh, subspace. But uh, instead, instead, if this is the n, then we're actually searching solution in the entire Rn. And that is exactly the original problem. And that is why the minimizer we got in the nth step will be the minimizer of this over the entire Rn. That is the original solution, x star. Okay.